Tulsa is an interesting city, with a lot of questions to be asked about it. Like, why does it only expand to the southeast, instead of going to the open land in the northwest? Or why does the grid design in the downtown face a completely different direction from the rest of the city? And while these are interesting questions that could definitely be answered in another video, it's not what I'm going to be talking about today. What I'm more interested in is the freeways looping around the downtown area. This is known as the Interdispersal Loop, or the IDL. And it consists of Interstate 244, US Highway 412, 64, and 75, as well as State Route 51. Now that's five different highways and under four miles of roadway, which seems like a little bit much. But that's where the topic of today's video comes in. See, if you look at the south and east portion of the IDL on Google Maps, you'll see a label for the interstate known as I-444. Now this was very confusing for me when I found it, because I-444 isn't even a thing. So today we're going to be talking about the interstate that doesn't exist. Before we get the video started though, I wanted to quickly ask if you'd consider subscribing. The channel has been doing amazing recently over the past few months, and it still is. But subscribers have slowed down a bit. So if you would please help out the channel and hit the red button below the video, it would mean the world to me. Thank you. So let's go back to the basics here and talk about Tulsa. It's the second biggest city in Oklahoma, with a population of 413,000 as of the 2020 census. It's located in an area that didn't see major development or growth until the air conditioning became widespread, meaning the fastest growth in Tulsa came between 1950 and 80, where it went from a population of 180,000 to a population of 360,000. Now, like most cities that developed in this way, Tulsa didn't really build the proper infrastructure to support double the population they formerly had. So, they were forced to build new freeways, as well as adding new lanes to current freeways. This started a long stretch of constant construction in the city, including the building of a massive new project in the downtown, where over 18 miles of new freeway would be built. This was called the Inner Dispersal Loop, which brings us back to the intro. The IDL was a big project, partially completed in 1967 and fully opened in 1975. It included I-244, which came up from I-44 and looped around the north and west parts of the downtown, before going back into I-44. There was then another spur route that went around the south and east parts of the downtown, forming a loop. This spur route was named I-444, and it opened in three segments. The initial legs opened in the early 1970 as spurs of Interstate 244. The southern section opened east from I-244 to 13th Street, while the northern section ran south from I-244 to 7th Street. It took another several years before the last portion was completed in the southeast corner. So that's all the story, right? Well, obviously not, because the interstate doesn't exist. When you drive there, you will see no signs for Interstate 444. Well, the reason for this comes back to what I said at the start about all the different highways that were on the 444 route. Over the time that it existed, the signage was incredibly confusing. Drivers would notice that they were driving on US Highway 64, US Highway 75, State Highway 51, and Interstate 444. This caused a lot of confusion and made the route a lot more difficult for people who weren't familiar with the area. And the exit numbers didn't help either, because they were based upon the mileage of I-44 from Oklahoma City which made no sense on its own since that's not where I-44 starts. But it also didn't make sense because I-444 was a spur route, meaning it wasn't supposed to use the same exit markers as the highway it was spurring off of. So this meant the exit numbers were in the 90s range on an interstate that was under 3 miles long. So all this led to complaints to the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, which began to look into a way that they could fix it. They found that way in 1995 by just getting rid of I-444 completely. They removed every sign for the interstate in an effort to ease confusion, as well as just getting rid of the exit numbers altogether. Now this seemed crazy at the time, but it actually wasn't unheard of in the US. The Michigan Department of Transportation removed signs along I-296 in Grand Rapids because of confusion involving the concurrency with the US-131. So basically what this means is that I-444 could continue to be funded by the federal government without any signs or real-life existence. But there's still a lot of confusion with this highway that makes it different from others. Because unlike I-296 in Grand Rapids, I-44 continues to exist on most maps, including most notably Google Maps. Most of the time, unsigned highways won't appear on maps, but for whatever reason, this is not the case with Tulsa's I-444. So, the highway continues to exist and not exist. In 2011, a reconstruction plan was started that would basically redo the whole thing. This plan would cost around $75 million, 
There's a strong argument towards getting rid of the highway altogether and reconnecting the downtown to the rest of the city, but at the moment there's not enough local support to get that going. So for now, I-444 will continue to maybe exist. Thanks for watching.